Morena, good morning. I am Trina Cooper. I'm the General Manager for PADA. And thank you for making time this morning to be part of our 12th PADA pop-up chat. And today we're talking about supporting a family with a diagnosis of Down syndrome. Um, the session is being recorded and will be made available on YouTube later this week. Um, please note that your video image may be seen when we share the presentation on our website and social media. So please ensure that you have your camera turned off if you want to remain incognito. Um, Kim Porthouse is the president of the New Zealand Down Syndrome Association and Zandra Vaccarino is the national exec officer. And today they're talking about how healthcare providers can support families with a diagnosis of Down syndrome, suitable language to use and services to refer to. Um, next week we're taking a break, uh, but we look forward to seeing you on the 22nd of July with Dr. Bronwyn Sweeney talking about antenatal anxiety. And I'll now hand over to Zandra and Kim. Thank you. Morena, good morning, Vicky, <laughs> Trina and Kim. Um, good to be here today and thank you for the opportunity to come and have a, a pop-up chat with everybody. So to start with, I thought we could just do a moment, hope you've got a pen and paper on hand, and I just want to do a bit of a visualisation exercise. So I'm going to take you through some scenarios. So. You take a deep breath and relax and then just listen to the story and then afterwards I'll ask you to write down. So imagine yourself really excited today. It's the day that you go and get your first scan of your baby. Um, you can't wait. It's the first time you're going to see the little one and it's going to be the time that you grab your photograph that you can keep forever and show them one day. And you go in and everything is fine and they're showing you the little legs and they're showing you the little arms and trying to point out where things are and suddenly you see an expression that looks of concern. And you look again and you can see this sudden silence, no talking, nothing's happening. And you say, is everything okay? And the person says, oh, I wouldn't worry, we'll wait until the blood tests come back. But um, it, yeah, it looks like there might be, your baby might have Down syndrome. I wonder if you take a few minutes to try and capture what you're feeling, what your body's experiencing, and jot those down. All right, move on to another scenario. So if you can shake yourself out of that for a minute and just imagine it's a busy week, Friday afternoon, you've done so much work, you're absolutely exhausted. You've just come out of a big meeting. Um, it's 5.30 and you note a missed call on your phone. So, but you see that there's a, um, a, mes a message. So you listen to your voice message and what you hear, it's your midwife's voice, you recognize her and you hear her saying, I'm sorry to tell you, but your prenatal screening results indicate that you that you have a high risk that your baby's got Down syndrome. I'm I'm away this week and um, this weekend, but I'll be back on Monday if you want to talk to me. Enjoy your weekend. I wonder what you're feeling at that moment. If you could write down those feelings and the experiences you're having. <laughs> Right, you now have just given birth to your baby and um, suddenly the room goes absolutely silent and they don't pass the baby to you. And you say, what's happening? And the doctor walks over and says, we have bad news, your baby has Down syndrome. Could you jot down what you're feeling?
Um, you probably all know this information, so um, bear with me if you do, but I um, spoke to Trina and she said it might be better just to do a bit of revision. So what is Down syndrome? And really, Down syndrome occurs from having an extra chromosome copy of chromosome 21 in every cell of the body. It's a natural occurring chromosome arrangement. It is a lifelong condition that causes delays in learning and development, but it is not a disease, a defect or an illness. It can occur in any family of any race, cultural, religion, and is never anyone's fault. In New Zealand, about one in every 1,000 babies are born with Down syndrome, so approximately one a week. People with Down syndrome are individuals and vary in their abilities and achievements, and they are contributing members of society. Why is it called syndrome? Dr. John Langdon Down identified a collection of characteristics in the mid 1800s. And as you all know, what is a syndrome? It's a group of characteristics that indicate an existence of a particular condition. So some of the characteristics could include almond-shaped eyes, light spots in the color part of the eyes, small low-set ears, small flat nose, low muscle tone, single crease across the palms, and a little shorter than family members. And it's important to note that any one of those characteristics could be um, part of um, a family characteristics. If you look at me, I have really got epicantic folds in my eyes, really. So, you know, that's one that could be nothing, but when there's a cluster of characteristics, always then you can say, okay, let's explore a little bit more. Just like you and me, as I said earlier, people with Down syndrome are individuals and vary in their abilities and achievements, and they are definitely contributing members of society. Down syndrome cannot be cured, but problems can be eased if people with Down syndrome have the help, and I think most importantly, if other people have a positive accepting attitude. This comes from number three. Myths and facts, again, you may know all of these, but just running through some of them. Down syndrome is a rare disorder. No, it's the most commonly occurring condition, and approximately one in every 1,000 babies in New Zealand are born with Down syndrome. Older mothers have babies with Down syndrome. Again, I'm sure you heard of that. Um, although older mothers have a high individual chance of having a baby with Down syndrome, more are born to younger mothers, reflecting the higher birth rate in this age group. People with Down syndrome experience significant health issues. Many people with Down syndrome are fit and healthy. And in the case of congenital disorders, they can often be totally corrected by surgery and cause no further problems. And although this isn't part of the talk, I think it's worth mentioning, this is the one that often is where things are focused around when um, healthcare professionals start talking to parents. They go to all the possibilities of health conditions that could occur and list them one by one in those discussions, when in fact, that is a myth. That is not gonna, you know, for most children, that is not the reality. People with Down syndrome do not live very long. It might be a question time. Any idea what the average um, lifespan might be at the moment? Well, I would share when my, my son was born, I looked in, the, in a textbook at the time and it said 16, which was really quite traumatic. But today have long lives given the right medical attention and um, in the UK, someone 72. And it's not unusual now to hear people in their 60s and 70s. Children with Down syndrome all go to special schools. In New Zealand, we're very fortunate, like the rest of the world, they attend mainstream schools, are integrated and take part in sports, camping, music, art programs, and all the activities in the communities. And not everyone's aware, but many people with Down syndrome are achieving NCA results and attending tertiary um, education at the moment. People with Down syndrome cannot achieve normal life goals. Again, with the right support they can, most children with Down syndrome achieve milestones. They learn to walk and talk, the active participants, participants in educational, vocational, social, and recreational community. And adults are really living full and semi-independent adult lives. Um, and they are really valued members of their families and their community and contribute in a variety of ways. People with Down syndrome cannot hold down jobs. Definitely a myth. People with Down syndrome can and do work, and many have jobs in a variety of places, including offices, cafes, shops, nurseries. The list is endless, really. Um, and the biggest barrier is that there's not always opportunities to get employment. 
people with Down syndrome all look the same. Certain characteristics that can occur, but they certainly look more like their family members than they do like, than anyone else. People with Down syndrome are always happy, loving, and affectionate. And no, they're not. Just like everyone else, they have a range of emotions and they experience a range of emotions. So that, yes, they have positive expressions of friendships, but they do get hurt. They can be upset um, and they can experience the range of emotions. Adults with Down syndrome are unable to form close interpersonal relationships. Um, people with Down syndrome have meaningful friendships, date, socialise, form ongoing relationships and get married. My son has been married for almost 17 months now. Um, so they live full lives, just like everyone else. Sharing the news. Um, I think this is really one of the most important things, really. Your first words family will have a lifelong impact. And I can't stress enough. If you get a group of parents together in a room and they chat whether their child is two or whether their child is 62 to five or maybe they're 72 year old, the parents will be able to tell you exactly what happened when they heard the news, where they were standing, what they could smell, what was, what was around them in the environment and the exact words said. said. So it is, it's a point of heightened awareness and it's something that has tremendous impact. And the way that you share the news um, can be, have really positive impact or it can have ongoing negative impact that can impact on the mental well-being of the families. So it has the power to influence our parents' experience and process the information provide. Um, and Kim was just talking earlier, and this might be a point, Kim, yeah. where you may want to talk about, I'm going to be talking a little bit about once there is a result. Kim was saying this is really important to look at, is that you can do stuff beforehand. So Kim, I don't know if you want to jump in here and add that then. Yeah, certainly. Um, I... I think it's really important that people understand that the process of how people cope with a diagnosis of Down syndrome starts actually when you first offer, and I now um, can see half of my son, <laughs> when you first offer the, um, the screening, how the professional um, coins the, the idea of Down syndrome uh, can have a, a lasting impact on whether the the parents think that this is um, a, a normal part of life where some people have a disability and, and some don't, or, or whether this is treated as, this is something really terrible, really abnormal, really um, thing. You know, if the professional doesn't give good information and unbiased information, then that can also, when, when the news is given and further down the thing, um, impact the how the parents perceive the news about having a child with Down syndrome. So education from the health professional needs to start right at the beginning and the positive attitude needs to be um, given by that health professional right at the beginning. It's, you know, get, people, a lot of people don't think about, and this is what I would challenge you all to do, is think about your own personal bias about how you feel about someone with Down syndrome and make and if, it, if that's a negative feeling then you need to not you need to be trying not to pass that negative feeling on because that'll actually impact that parent way way down the track that's probably enough um, and I think Kim we've chatted often about it isn't it that one of the things that women often do when they go and they meet their midwife for the first time or wherever the health professional they go to um, they're not thinking often people are thinking I'm going for my scan I'm going for my photograph that's what they're thinking they're not realizing that they're entering into the screen pathway so they will accept that without understanding and we feel at that point there's a real obligation and responsibility to clearly explain that you're now entering into a screening pathway and is this what you want and to consider before you go into that pathway how do you feel about diversity where we go where things come and it's a very unnatural way of actually proceeding through a pregnancy woman tell us because that's not what you're wanting to think about you're now medicalizing a very natural process but it is a conversation that is very valuable to have so that people can consider some of those things that they might have to face later. 
um, I think it's quite irresponsible to let people enter into the pathway without realizing that they may have to come at a point when results come um, to consider those questions then in that space. Yeah, they need to consider the value base, you know, before they enter the screening pathway. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they, they, people have to have a chance to explore how they might feel about the um, a negative, you know, a positive result, meaning that your baby might have Down syndrome. You know, I've I've had as a midwife, I've had a number of ex cases where women come and say to me and we've discussed the screening and um, and they've decided not to screen and then they say, oh, but when am I going to get my routine 12-week scan? And actually, we've discussed this, you decided not to have the screening for Down syndrome. This 12-week scan is, the scre is part of the screening for Down syndrome. And that the shock, you know, that that they said but everyone thinks it's routine and I think that's a misconception that's out there and health professionals have played a part in creating that misconception that that these scans are, are routine and um, they're just a, a chance to have a picture of your baby yeah. absolutely so the manner in which news is shared will impact on expectant new parents well-being and mental health as Kim and I have chatted um, how do you think parents will respond to the news? And so this is an opportunity to go back to our little visualization exercise and look at the words you wrote down um, that you would maybe feel in those circumstances. And I suppose the point there to bring out is that that's how you would feel imagining being in that situation. But this is how people would really feel because they are in those situations. And none of those scenarios were extreme. They are all stories of what people have been told, have told us about what they've experienced. And some of them have been even, I would say, worse scenarios than that. But those are very common scenarios that people would have and be left in those spaces to deal with their feelings as they walk up the room or have to continue their day. So we've said what were your feelings and emotions and as Kim said it's really important to identify the if you have positive or negative bias um, we all do no matter what the circumstances are we have certain biases in, in the situation the other thing that's really important to look at is what knowledge do you have about Down syndrome you know if I you could have read a textbook 10 years ago well things have move very quickly in 10 years, areas are very different. Um, so is it informed? Is it um, evidence-based information you have about Down syndrome? Do you know people with Down syndrome? If you do, you may have gone to school with them, they may live in the neighborhood. How do you feel about them? What kind of feelings do you, does it conjure up when you think of them? So it's important to acknowledge what we think, how the knowledge we have, how we feel about society, what we believe, so that we can constantly manage that bias engaging with parents. Um, because otherwise it's going to be part of those conversations that you have with the people. And how you engage with them will really impact in the future. Dealing with those initial feelings. So I think the most important thing up front is that these are new parents or expectant parents and the birth of any baby should be experienced as happy news. Um, and to remember as well, we're entering with new families, you don't know the scenario. There could be a scenario where someone has um, already had a baby with Down syndrome, was quite happy to have a second. They could have had a sibling, they could have a cousin, they could have an aunt, they could have an uncle, they could have a good friend with Down syndrome. Um, they may have been trying to have a child for many years and not been successful. So now that they, they're pregnant, they're happy to be pregnant. Um, so think those scenarios don't often play out in people's minds when they tell people that they're going to have Down syndrome. Parents will react differently to learning their child has or may have Down syndrome and that's really important to consider because of that background. Acknowledge that they might not have expected this news and it's okay to know a range of views. And I think that we got it, you know, it's all it is. And you may be experiencing different feelings and not being on 
an emotion to it. I think it's really important to create a safe space for the expectant parent or new parents to express their feelings. You are aware already what you're going to be talking to the parents about. Parents are coming into the unknown. When you give them their news, the first thing is, this is the unspeakable cup and zone and all those feelings. And if you environment that's safe, it's a place for people to talk. Many so, parents say that the way they felt immediately. Yes, Kim? Just, um, I just, you've been cutting up a bit. I just thought it'd be um, good to uh, just explain to participants that um, your internet connection is a bit um, dodgy this morning due to the weather in your area. And um, yeah, you will, if they experience that, you know, you, you will come back. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah, I have no idea. So maybe someone should wait and I become unstable and then I'll, I'll, I'll wait a little while before continuing. Possibly you could do that. It's improving at the moment. Okay, so <coughs> forward then. Um, many parents said the way they felt immediately after they've been delivered the diagnosis was not how they felt a few days after processing the news. And I think this is a really important thing to remember is that in that moment you may see extreme responses to it and i think for many people professionals that's the only emotion they see they don't see the families again or the parents um they don't know how they've managed afterwards and they think they stay in this place but it's not where they stay for most families it's just the media so being aware of, you all be aware of different grief models um kubla raswan by the teens, but the one that I think works really well is the tear model. To accept the reality of the loss, there's going to be grief. Experience the pain of the loss, adjust to a new life without the person, and reinvest in the new reality. And so, adjust to life without the person, I think, is an important topic because people will imagine what life will be like with this baby. They have plans and visions and hopes for the future. And when you give the news, changes and for many people it feels like that dream has died so although the baby is still there the dream has died but once they once they adjust to that news they reinvest in the new reality they make new plans and a lot of you may be familiar with that poem that says you planned a trip to holland it was the very first woman who started the down syndrome association and she wanted to explain it to people if you haven't seen it um, you can Google and look for it, which basically is a talk about the fact that she invested so much time to go to Holland. And when the plane arrives, um, she's in Italy and she's devastated initially because this is not what she'd planned for. Then discovers the wonders of Italy and finds that it's got made even better. Um, so I think it's important to remember the tier model of grief. Um, and as you all are aware of um, different emotions and anxiety and depression where you go in, um, people work through different experiences. So there could be a short while where they feel um, anxious about it. And that anxiety is often provoked by the unknown. What does this mean for us? So giving people more information, getting them connected is a way of dealing with that unknown and helping them to move forward. Don't know if you wanted to add anything there, Kim? Um, probably, probably think you've covered that, yeah. Just, um exactly what you're saying and if you use some positive language around uh, you know at that time when they're experiencing that grief um and just and, and give them time those two things you know can be very important i think the positive language about the good things that people with down syndrome achieve um you don't have to be talking about their adult life because they're concerned with their baby but you know you can be talking about the the near future, and you can be talking about it in a positive way. Um, that that starts the thoughts about the future coming in with positive thoughts rather than with just negative thoughts. Yeah, one of the po most important things that um, an obstetrician said to me was, um, "What my husband asked, so what will we, what will life be like for him as an adult?" And he says. Um, well, I'll be able to tell you that, um, but later on, he said, um, he, you can ask him how he feels as an adult when he goes to university. And that, you know, 
me, I thought that's not going to happen, but it actually opened a seed that that could happen. And we do know that there are people with Down syndrome who have gone to university. So it's not impossible. It's not um, unrealistic. It's an opening that, that you can have dreams for this baby as well as the one that they thought they were going to have. Mm. Absolutely. So it's not what you were expecting, but it's still a beautiful journey. The experience of mothers of children with Down syndrome. So there's some research being done if you want to look up um, afterwards and read the article um, and some very positive outcomes. And there's quite a lot of research that indicates um, really positive outcomes, un unlike what some people expect. Support such as family, so this is what the research has shown, support such as family, friends, spirituality and religion can play a key role in helping mothers of children with Down syndrome cope and fathers. Um, Health care providers need to understand the significance of holistic support. And I think that's really important is to look at that holistic support for families. In prior decades, it was often assumed that increased stress associated with raising a child with Down syndrome would result in negative consequences for both individual family members and the family as a whole. And you will often hear families will phone me when they need support and say, and I was told this is the worst thing I could do for my siblings, for, the, for these siblings, is to continue the pregnancy. Um, it's going to affect our marriage. And actually the research is indicating that that is not true at all. Uh, currently the growing consensus that this is not always the case. Although some families with children with Down syndrome have difficulty adapting to the increased stress, other families adapt successfully and even thrive. What we find is if you look at the family who have not adapted well, probably if you looked at their pregnancy, even if the child didn't have Down syndrome, they wouldn't be thriving because circumstances are problematic. And so it's easy to just assume because of Down syndrome, not looking at what's happening financially, what was happening to the marriage beforehand, what was happening to the networks of people around them, were they isolated? There could be a whole number of situations well things you should do well the first thing is you should say congratulations yes, remember sir. you are in a position to create a lasting impression when speaking to new expectant parents of a child with down syndrome and families tell us over and over again that's the one word that they don't hear no one congratulates them on having a child with Down syndrome or be expecting a child with Down syndrome. They don't get birthday, you know, congratulation cards. We have stories of people receiving sympathy cards. Um, and so the first thing needs to be, it is congratulations. And so I thought I would share um, a video clip with you and hopefully it will work. <laughs> Congratulations. 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 <laughs> Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Well, well done. done. <laughs> the greatest Tonga or the greatest trainer is found in the hidden places. It's actually really exciting and you get to be part of such a beautiful community. There's things that will be hard, um, but there's so many positive things as well. Make the most of your little baby being a little baby and just try not to think too far ahead. Speak to people who've been in that situation. And see how welcoming that community is. Just know that, that the beauty that they'll bring into the world, that's priceless, I think. I never knew a child could bring so much joy. Yeah. <laughs> the day she took her first steps, we were all in tears. So she's really given us that appreciation for what's really important in life. She's made me the person I've always wanted to be, a kinder, caring, more respectful of other people. I love that comment, that poem, where it talks about the road less travelled. We've taken the other path and it's less travelled, but it's beautiful. Oh, we're off again. <laughs> it didn't quite play properly. It was lots of still shots, but... Um... Yeah. <laughs> But if you, with the you know the link onto the YouTube video, um, you can you can search it out and actually see it properly, where they see those people speaking. <laughs>
Yeah. Um, and we will, um, at the end of the slides, put all the links in as well so people can watch it in their own time. And I have to add, there's um, all the people that appear on the couch, actually there's a series called Couch Conversations with Parents and they all share a little bit more of these stories. So it's a really useful resource to share with other people as well. So really important, as Kim said, you should become familiar and comfortable with the discussing the results of screening and be aware of the language you use when speaking about Down syndrome with the family. Um, and if it means rehearsing with people, then so be it um, until you're really comfortable, because I think some conversations and the feedback you get from the parents is you can hear that the person, this was the first time they had to have this conversation and they were so uncomfortable having the conversation that the whole thing just generates into a really not positive situation. So I think you could, could, I'm just going to interject there, Jizana. If a, if a health professional um, doesn't know how to talk to the parent, you know, it's a good idea they could give us a call and just have a discussion with us about what sort of sorts of things I should say and how can you know how do I go about this because we can give you some advice. On, on, you know, how to lead that conversation. You know, we're, we're more than happy to do that, to support somebody to have that conversation. That's all I wanted. Yeah, back to you, Zandra. Um, use balanced language. Very important. It's a chance, not a risk. And we've tried really campaign to get the word risk out because I don't think there's anybody that hears the word risk and you don't immediately become concerned. It is a negative word. Um, Australia has been very successful, unlike the NZDSA, that's where we have to still work, to change the language completely. So um, there's changes that they use in risk, as Kim will know better than me, they boldly highlighted at the top of the form comes back, risk. Now that is a very unfortunate way but when you talk into the parent you don't have to use the word risk it's very important to say chance um, and communicate up-to-date information that's evidence-based about life with Down syndrome don't give old information in fact what we often find is no information about Down syndrome at all is given if you speak to people they have found our contacts on their own a friend has referred them um, what they will get is information on termination I'm a pamphlet, but they get nothing about Down syndrome. Share the information in the most supportive environment as possible, and really and truly, I would say, if it's, it may, may take more time, do it in person, and where possible, suggest the partner or support person is able to attend. You know, um, mothers will often say they were all on their own when this news was given. On the phone, they'd be at work, you know, not checking, is this a place to speak? Um, and so the best way of doing it, I think Kim gave an example when when um, when our son was born and the pediatrician took our baby and he held him in his arms and wanted said he wanted to see my husband and I just for a regular check, which wasn't what it was, but anyway, that's what we went and we sat down um, and he held the baby and he told me what a beautiful baby he was and pointed out some of the things that was amazing about the son. And then said, oh, and I'm very pleased these results have come back and they're all good. And what we've also have found is that your baby has Down syndrome. There was it, and your baby has Down syndrome. There was no risk, there was no negative. And then he just said, and I want you, you may not know much about Down syndrome, but I want to tell you, this is what life is like for people with Down syndrome. And again, featured us in terms of people he knew that worked, that lived um, independent lives, that went to school and almost addressed all the myths that the books were still talking about. Um, and then said, the best you can do is just love your son. And then did some practical things like, when you're ready, you may want to look at some early intervention stuff and put us in contact with the Down Syndrome Association. Didn't say, and we were in South Africa at the time, didn't say he has a number, ring them. He said to me, will you give me permission to ring them for you? And that's what he did. So he rang them so that I didn't have to do the call. Um, because a lot of people will say making that very first call to the association is an extremely difficult thing. As someone once said, it's like, it was a club I didn't perhaps want to join, but I was forced to join. Once they joined, they were fine, but that's part of the healing process. Avoid the direct, uh, directive or emotive language. Definitely not, I'm sorry, um, I have some bad news. 
this is terrible. If you want to have a good smile, I would suggest you go to the Canadian Down Syndrome Association um, and they have what to say. There's a lot of swear words in it, but it's really good. And it's young people saying what you don't need to say and what you could say. Offer to meet with the family again in the next days after they've absorbed absorb the information. Do not place them under time pressure. Um, and that is something that I think happens for families quite often is that there's that time pressure um, to make decisions about whether they're going to do further testing or whether the continuation of pregnancy um, and that shouldn't happen. They should be given the space to really go and look at what they want to do. And again, as I've mentioned over and over again, and I cannot emphasize it enough, is have to get updated information about Down syndrome. Have balanced information available for the expectant parents. And this should include, and it's really important to some lived experience, so some information from parents and information of people with Down syndrome, perhaps. And encourage the parents to ask questions. And if you cannot ask the question, answer them, provide them with informational context to help even better find that information and give it back to them. Don't expect people to source their own information. Some people will, but some people will not. Um, and put processes in place of to answer questions initially and with further follow up. And as a New Zealand Down Syndrome Association, we definitely. Um, advocate that families should be offered counselling. If there's funding for people to undergo testing, there should be funding available and supports necessary for counselling, because this is a major decision people are going to make in their life. And they should, um, it's, they need professionals who can talk them through that um, counselling process so they can make an informed decision. And I think, you know, um, we, you know the, in terms of um, perinatal anxiety and depression, if people have had such opportunity for counselling, um, when they're making decisions, when they get news, all those sorts of things, it would be, you know, we wouldn't be seeing um, where people maybe have um, higher cases of trauma or stress-related conditions around how they were told about their child. Yeah. And I think I'd like to emphasize that as well, Kim, is what we hear from parents afterwards, the anxiety, the depression, the stress, is really around how the health professionals support them when they give them the news and the process they go through. It is not actually, yes, the unknown of having a child with Down syndrome, but that's what they deal with and they manage. And if they're given the supports, they manage that really well and adapt. It's when that whole experience is quite traumatic in the beginning because they're not given information because they're told it's bad news. Um, that causes that anxiety and which can linger. Um, and if they support it initially, then that is worked through much sooner. And by the time baby arrives, um, parents, you know, all parents are stressed when babies are born, but it's not an it's not excessive or more than other parents. It has nothing to do with what they did or not do to cause the child to have Down syndrome. And I think that's really important just to emphasize because it's a very natural place to go for anyone when things go happen. If I did this, what if I did that? Um, and so just giving them the space to talk about it and reassuring them. And I think it's also important to acknowledge here yeah, that cult cultural diversity does have an impact on this. Um, be aware of different cultures having different values and beliefs around children being born with Down syndrome and be able to address those in a very positive way to say actually it isn't about something you did so that people don't feel guilt or shame because for some cultural groups that, that can still happen. Show concern and support during a challenging time. I think that scenario I gave you with a midwife phoning at 5.30 in the afternoon and then saying, sorry, I'm not on duty until Tuesday, um, does not demonstrate what this should be about. Um, it does mean maybe going the extra mile for families that you wouldn't normally do, but there's other people that can help support during that time. Remind them they're not alone on the journey and that they may want to connect with other parents and families who have a child with Down syndrome. Um, and I would often say that you offer that and people initially say no and to respect that because they're not ready. But don't think no in the moment is no forever. Lots of families would say that if someone had only offered that again a couple of days later or a week later, a couple of months later, I would have jumped at the opportunity. In the moment, I wasn't ready. Provide information when the person is ready. Um, and I think that is really important. 
have it ready, but recognize that giving too much information can be overwhelming and the parent will just put it aside. We often get told when um, you know babies are born, parents weren't expecting babies to have Down syndrome. They just told, they might've been told without um, their partner around. They're alone in their room, they're trying to cope with this and suddenly people will be giving them the, our, our support resources. And what they do is it's too much. They don't even look at the resource. So you have to be sensitive about when does this person need the information? When will it be most useful? Ensure that you plan for follow-up visits, phone calls or further referrals as many parents need time to process their emotions and then want help. And um, I think it's important to try and stagger those calls and make sure as time goes on that parents then become more available. And then again, near, after you've done that, again, follow up and ask if they'd like to be connected with a local Down syndrome group or range for parent visit. And again, I would say, because of privacy, we don't know when babies are born, so we cannot provide any support. Um, and families are often in a space where it's in the too hard basket to just pick up the phone and ring us. So do something like our pediatrician did to say, will you give me permission to ring them, pass on your details so they may contact. And when, when people do do that, we find that most parents will say yes, and then they get the information. The concern about not giving us, um, not connecting families to us is that means that families continue not being connected and when they're not connected, they don't know about all the supports, natural supports and other supports they can access, um, which means that life can be stressful because they're not getting those supports that they're entitled to or could, could support them in a different way. Yeah, and that's so, another pre preventative factor, isn't it? Yeah, and we, we do find that families that don't link into natural connections and supports can start feeling isolated. Um, and then with that isolation, as you know, will lead into other mental health, potentially mental health um, and their well-being. So it's important to try and connect them. Non-directive counselling, as we mentioned, really important. If you are seeing signs and you would know the signs because you work with it, as um, all parents who have babies and there could be something going on, watch for that and then um, provide some of that counselling as well and remembering not to guide them along that counselling. Um, some of our supports and resources, we do have support parents that can go in to either physically meet with people or via the phone or now thanks to technology via Zoom um, and also our 0800 number. We have our website with information and we do provide um, a resource pack for new parents to read through and be able to link them to lots of other um, groups that could provide support as well right through the country and we have you know coffee groups for parents afterwards there's some regions that offer early intervention support as well so there's lots of available and it just is a phone call so you can ring us on an 0800 number or connect to us via our email and they'll all be at the end of the slide we'll add them on and i just thought um we might just watch what young people with Down syndrome would like to share. Hopefully this Dear future family. We are here to tell you that it's going to be okay. Your child, brother, sister, and grandchild will be able to do many things. Your child will be able to laugh with you. Hug you. And tell you she loves you. Your child will be able to run, swim, and play. And to go to school to learn to read and write. You will be able to always do what they love. To perform at Kapahaka. To compete in the Olympics. Learn karate. <laughs> Sing so. like Stan Walker. Because we can participate and have fun. Just like every other child. Sometimes it can be difficult. Very difficult. Almost impossible. But isn't it like that for all families? Your child will have friends. And good friends. Your child will, will have dreams. And both support. They will be able to reach their goals. Like being able to work. Mm. Make a... Great, graduate. Become a volunteer. Be your address on Sean Street. Move out of home to go flatting. Cook meals. Earn money. And with that money, travel. Dear future family. Yourself, brother, sister, and grandchild 
will be heavy. Just like I am. There we go. So um, I suppose that the next slide that I had was just to um, give the opportunity to ask questions if you wanted questions and also just to say um, thank you because if we work together we can make a real difference for family that they don't have to go down the, the path of anxiety, depression and need your services. Um, so open to questions if anyone has any. Right. Thanks, Sandra. Thanks, Kim. Vicky, have you got anything that you'd like to ask? You're welcome to unmute. Yep. I'm not really. It was a really good presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Nice, though. A lot of it, like I sort of can relate back to um, with because I'm a family support worker for Heart Kids, and the congratulations. You've got a baby. Um, you know, people do forget that when a child is born with. Um, additional needs and um, you know, that's the most important thing you can do is just celebrate that with the family. Yeah, absolutely agree. Absolutely. And we work quite closely with heart kids as well, um, if we need to. Right, well, thanks for your input there, Vicky. Sounds like um, we might have to do another pop up um, talking about heart kids as well. <laughs> be a good opportunity down the track. <laughs> well, thanks, Sandra. Thanks, Kim. That was a really, really in-depth presentation, and um, you know, just about what to have that that positive take on a, a family's pregnancy, and you know, that's what the the care providers need to do is just to be able to give them that support, that information, that knowledge, and support them through that journey and um, you know, be the, the best that they can be with it. I know we had two really awesome kids at um, my boys' primary school um, with Downs, and we got to know the families really well. And it was just so neat to have these kids integrated into the, the normal schools, and um, you know, one of them's actually gone off to university. You know, how cool is <laughs> that? It's really neat, so. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, great opportunity, yeah. So thank you. We'll wind up now. Appreciate your time, um, you thank guys. You and um, thank yeah, you. thank you. Thank you very much for you know opening our eyes to being able to help support these mums and dads. Really appreciate it. Thank you for the time and enjoy your day. Great. Thanks, Vicky, thank for being you. online as well. Yes, thank you, Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> <a nice> <laughs>